Great to see you again. In this short presentation, I will talk about procurement management. Uh, what is procurement management? What are the processes and the process steps that they are related to? What is a buyer-seller relationship? We have bidding and bid documents, and we have pro procurement in an adaptive environment. Now, when we look at procurement, we're dealing with buying things, buying services and goods from suppliers. And one of the things that we want to do is to be sure that we are protected. We don't want to be exposed to over billing or uh, excessive um, uh, costs. We want to manage some of the risks related to procurement. So basically we can look at different types of contracts and we will have some examples what they are and what the risks are about. When we plan the process, we uh, set up the rules for procure procurement. And typically in a company, there may be a division dealing with procurement. That division will take into account all these elements. And we look at later at project execution, where we are closing the contracts, where we are signing the contracts, and where the contracts will be executed. And of course, it's very important to monitor and control that all is done as agreed in the contracts. When we have a look at the procurement management processes, we see, first of all, initiation, there is no process. We have planned procurement during the planning step. We have conduct com procurements during execution. And finally, we have control procurements during monitoring and control. And the only thing that happens during closing is that we have to close all the contracts. It's basically uh, part of the uh, contractual agreement. We have to see that everything has been closed. When we look at buyer-seller relationships, well, it's very important to create a successful relationship. The supplier wants to have uh, guarantees that you will keep your part of the bargain or better that you will pay on time. And you as the buyer, you want to be sure the seller is trustworthy by evaluating the buyer before and creating what is in fact an approved seller list. It means that the people who have been approved by your company, that you can do a business with them. Uh, there is a proven relationship, there are common rules, and typically you will see that the things work smoother. Buyer-seller relationships are very important, and basically the deal should be win-win. Now, typically when there is a contract and one of the parties is in a loss, uh, you win, it's very good, and you are better than the others, well, somebody will try to find different ways to get back to you. When you sign a contract with a lot of very uh, low prices and things like that, be sure that the supplier will try to find ways to compensate for it. And it may be a lot more expensive than giving in a little bit and creating a win-win deal. Win-lose, there should not be a party losing. It's always negative for the uh, outcome of any uh, relationship between a buyer and a seller. Like I said, procurement is typically managed by a procurement department and they set up all the contracts, the relationships, and you can use those parties when you are working on your project. Now, typically we have bid documents, bidding, and we look at, for example, different types of bidding. The first one is a request for information. Here you're just looking at the market, what is available, what are the possible solutions before you start looking into a final agreement. Then you have a request for quotation. Now here you're going to see what the cost is for the solution that's interesting for you. And you will get through the RFQ an estimation of the budget. And that's very interesting because you have a more realistic view of what is available, what the costs are, and you can make a better selection who and what to choose. And then you have an RFP. Here you're asking out to the possible suppliers to provide you with a proposal. Uh, this is the solution we want. They 
can send in a proposal with a cost, with motivation, and it uh, can lead or it could lead to a final contract between a seller and a buyer. Responding to an RFP doesn't mean even when you are the best that you will get the contract. The customer can still say, no, I'm not interested. But basically, this is a very important step because you will get a real cost estimate of the work that has to be completed. We also have a look at the contract types and the different risks. So when we look at the different contra contract types, we have first three types of fixed price and fixed firm price, fixed incentive price or fee and fixed price with, with economic adjustments. Uh, basically, these are a fixed price. When we look at the incentive fee, uh, there could be an incentive if you do something faster or better. And when you have economic adjustment, this is just an adjustment for the cost of living. And most of the contracts I was dealing with when we were in military constructions, uh, we had a fixed price with economic adjustment. We have a cost plus fixed fee. Here it's typically the buyer uh, because the costs can increase and may run out of control. We also have a cost plus incentive fee and a cost plus award fee. Here the risk is more shared, but there is still some higher risk for the buyer. And time and material contracts are typically at risk for the buyer. Now the material costs may be manageable, but the hourly rate, the hourly cost can become out of control. People can work longer on the work and it will mean that you have to compensate for all these hours. And that may be uh, basically a problem for your project. When we look at procurement in an agile or in an adaptive environment, here we have typically rapid changes, rapid changes and uncertainty. And we may include sellers in the team to create a collaborative working relationship. And you will have here more a shared risk procurement model. Typically, the risks here are shared between buyer and seller. Now, larger projects may use a combination of adaptive approach for some deliverables and a more stable approach for other parts. And what you can have are master service agreements. And it gives, in fact, a basic contract in which different types of work are being described and how they will be paid for. It creates a very flexible arrangement between the buyer and the supplier. And that's a very important element to consider, certainly in this very agile environment. You don't want to go through long procurement periods. So basically you have this MSA that will help you to deal with it in a very flexible way. So that's what I wanted to say about procurement. There are a lot of other things to be included, but basically it gives you a short overview what procurement is about. So let's continue to the next video and I'm looking forward to seeing you there. Thank you and bye-bye.